Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I am your host. I just wanted to make some comments on an article I read here. Um, it was written, the title of the article is Baker. Uh, reform stemming from Taylor shooting could prevent future tragedies. Let me repeat that because that title is very important. Baker. Reform stemming from Taylor shooting could prevent future tragedies. And it's written by a Lee, can I pronounce the last name, C-H-O-T-T-I-N-E-R, community editor. And uh, it's from the uh, Jewish Community Newspaper. Uh, it's, I read the Jewish Community Newspaper a lot because um, I, I go teach there um, at the Jewish Community Center. It's a good newspaper. You know, I like it. I like it. I read that, and I tried to read the, um, what else, uh, the Louisville Defender a lot, too. I, th- I wish more people would read this newspaper and the Louisville Defender more often. Um, the, and the exact name for this newspaper is Jewish Louisville Community. Jewish Louisville Community. And I'm talking about the March 26, 2021 issue. Uh, and we're going to do some review here in this article. So I thought this was a very interesting article. And so uh, it's really a little bit of a profile of a Lanita, Lanita, L-O-N-I-T-A, first name, last name, Baker, Lanita Baker. This is a quote, describes 2020 as Breonna Taylor's year, despite the forced entry into Taylor's apartment by Louisville Metro Police Department officers and the shootings that took her life. And I'm quickly going to go through some of the things I highlighted here. Taylor, 26, and her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, were sleeping at her apartment on March 13, 2020, when three Louisville police officers exercising a search warrant forced their way into the dwelling. Thinking the officers were intruders, Walker fired a warning shot. The police fired back several times. Six bullets um, hit Taylor, killing her instantly. Going further into the article... The reforms outlined in the settlement, because what happened is that uh, the Breonna Taylor family, uh, they got a settlement, $12 million settlement. The, and uh, here's the, uh, one of the attorneys who participate in helping get that uh, settlement, Baker. Uh, the reforms outlined in the settlement fell into, th- fell into three categories. Community reforms, accountability reforms, and reforms related to the no-knock warrants that led to Taylor's death. Going further into the article, it was more about what can officers do differently to protect our community, to build relationships with our community. The accountability reforms are designed to create barrier systems for LMPD to identify problem officers before it's too late, including tracking officers fired for cause that they can't get hired at other police um, departments. And uh, at the end here says, Baker, a former prosecutor, public defender, and government litigator, uh, is optimistic that the reforms contained in the settlement will lead to long-term changes in police here, policing here. I don't think that the city of Louisville wants to pay another family $12 million in a case, she said, so I do think the city of Louisville is serious about the reform and change. You know what? I had some issues with that. And uh, here's why I'm going to raise those issues. Number one, they were, there was a warrant. Those police officers are serving a warrant. A judge approved of the warrant, and it was a no-knock warrant. But they knocked. The police officers knocked anyway. It's clear evidence that's what happened. And there was no response from inside. They knocked. Other people heard the knocking. There's evidence that other people heard the knocking. Other people acknowledged, yes, we heard the knock, or yes, we heard... Um, the police officers announced themselves, and there was no response from inside. Here's another thing that uh, bothers me here. They said Walker, Kenneth Walker, fired a warning shot. A warning shot? That warning shot hit a police officer, almost killed a police officer. Then the police responded. I'm sorry, when you're fired upon, the police officers are trying to fire back. They are trained to fire back. And that's what they did. Here's another little question I have. Walker was the one with the, the weapon. Walker was the one who got shot. But Taylor's the only one who got killed. You know, it'll be interesting to know. Where was everybody positioned? Where was Walker positioned 
that he didn't get hit. And where was Taylor position to where she got hit six times? People, I got some uh, paperwork, an article, where a person close to the case made the comment, if Walker hadn't shot, Bree, nickname for Brianna, would be alive today. Now, that's what that person said. It's not what I said. It's what that person said. It's not what I said. It's what that person said. And there's, you know, I got copies of this. Okay, so someone explained to me reforms, community reforms, accountability reforms, and reforms related to the no-knock warrants that led to Taylor's death. The no-knock warrant did not lead to Taylor's death. I'm just going to flat out say that. The no-knock warrant did not lead to Taylor's death. You look at things factually, objectively, that's not what happened. The police, when they entered, and they entered because, and they, and they, they had a, a warrant, and her name was on the warrant. They did announce themselves. They didn't enter the house with guns blazing. They entered the house, and next thing you know, boom, someone's shooting at them. One of the police officers are hit. They fired a return fire. I don't know what you're talking about, how there's no knock warrant. I mean, explain that to me. Maybe I'm getting something wrong here. Maybe I'm not understanding something. And community reforms make a direct connection between what happened and your so-called community reforms. Where's, where's the connection? What are you talking about? I mean, unless, unless you want the LMPD to stop investigating uh, drug dealing, what, what reforms are you talking about? Unless you want the LMPD to, to say, well, you know, we'll go out and we'll pick them up and then we'll take them to court and then you guys release them again. No problem. We, we'll just do it again. Is that the kind of reform you want or don't want? I, I don't know. Clarify this. Clarify that for me. I'm a little slow. I'm a little slow. And then... It was more about what officers can do differently to protect our community, to build relationships with our community. They have no problem whatsoever. The LMPD has no problem whatsoever in building relationships with the community. They have shown that time and time and time and time again over the years. That's ridiculous. They've shown that. And what they can do differently to protect our community? No, maybe what they what can be done to help them more efficiently protect the community from dope dealers. Let's talk about that, what we can do to help the LMPD more efficiently get dope dealers off the street and keep them off the street. Maybe, we, maybe, maybe, maybe that's what we need to talk about. Maybe, maybe that's the way we need to, to put that. Okay? And then uh, identify problem officers. Well, these officers, for the most part, did nothing wrong. Hey, you know, yeah, one officer, he was, he was on the outside, and he was he was said, hey, no, you're shooting randomly, wildly, you got to go. You know, of course, Kenneth Walker, he's not going to be uh, held accountable for shooting a police officer and almost killing a police officer. In fact, he, he's not being held accountable that way, and he's definitely not being held accountable that, that way in this article. And we hold him accountable. And then uh, the officers did not have uh, their body cameras on. They had that on. It would have been a, I think this would have been a done deal. But, you know, but problem officers? Problem officers? What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. And maybe there's some other issues with, with the, uh, with the uh, warrant. But bottom line is this. Problem officers? That's ridiculous. Now, I tell you what we do have. We do have some problem dope dealers. We do have some problem dope dealers. And we may have a problem with people who, who want to protect dope dealers or help them. Hey, man, I've, I've sold this dope. Can you hold this money for me? Sure, no problem. I think that's a problem. You know, what happened to Breonna Taylor was absolutely 
horrible. It's tragic. I cannot. No one can really come close to understanding the pain, her mother's pain, or any mother's pain, when they lose their child, when they have to, when they have to bear their child. You know, it happened in my family. And there's nothing that, I don't think there's anything, there's nothing anybody can say or do to help them get over that. They will take that pain, that hole in their heart, to the time that they, they go to the grave. It's a horrible deal. And I say that about Breonna Taylor's father, too. I don't think he's been given much uh, uh, notice. I don't know if he's still alive. Or I don't know where he's at. But I'm sure he must be feeling horrible, too. Um, it's a it's a it's a horrible thing. The mother what the mother and father are going through. Um, so of course, everyone's heart goes out to them, and that includes the police officers, regardless of how certain political organizations want to politicize this and put off and demonize the Louisville Metro Police Department. No, we're not going to. We're not going to. No. They're not gonna, we're not going to let them demonize, be demonized that way. And this article really is not that helpful in presenting things out there. And this uh, Miss Lonita Baker, and I'm sure she means well, but uh, no, totally off. But you know, I don't want to say she's totally off base, but I do want to say I have no agreement with her with her whatsoever. And per the facts, per the facts. And I do want to take this time to uh, commend Daniel Cameron for his role in this whole thing. Responsible, professional uh, man of character. Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host.